This is Dr. Robert Frankel. I'm an emergency medicine and anti-aging physician, and welcome to the Modern Man Podcast. In this podcast, we talk about important topics for men, which include male aesthetics, health, and wellness. But most importantly, we try to remove the stigma of male aesthetics because I think that it's important to understand what men can do for aesthetics and how important it is to for their social and psychological well-being and ultimately just to feel and look good. So take the journey with me. It's going to be okay. It's going to be fun. So enjoy it. I think the next episode will be really interesting and informative. So take a listen. Hope you enjoy it. Again, this is Dr. Rob Frankel. Enjoy the, the episode. Thank you. So today's topic, we're going to be talking about medical skin treatments for men. This is a pretty important topic, and I talked to a bunch of my male patients, and we discussed, like, what are the most important things that we worry about as men as far as what things bother you? And so I picked out five different problems that occur and I'm going to list them out. And then we're going to talk about these problems. We're going to talk a little bit about skin. We're going to talk about why things work and why things don't work. We're going to talk about the medical uh, medical approach to skin care. Because it's, it is different than things that you're going to pick up at the pharmacy, things that you're going to see on TV, things that you're going to see on on. Uh, the infomercials late at night because of the fact that to create true change, a lot of times you have to work on the permanent area of skin. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. So the five things that in skin that most um, patients uh, were worried about were one was scarring and acne scarring and so this is you know years later uh, you you could still have you know scarring or acne scarring uh, pore size um, and this happens later in life you notice that your pore has become enlarged um, texture of your skin and this is creates fine lines and even wrinkles um, which is also, you know, with age, and we're going to talk a little bit about the different cells and collagen that change, um, that cause this, the tone of the skin, which means that, so as we get older, the tone of the skin is very important because you start to feel that the skin might sag, you might not be as fit, you know, and on your face, just like as we, as we see, um, as we go to the gym, we notice that we're not kind of that, we're not having that six pack. If we ever did have that six pack, um, in our midsection, but we're, we're not having that tautness around our jawline, um, around our cheeks, around our eyes. Um, and so all those things occur. And the reason why they occur is a couple of reasons. The first thing is that you can develop collagen damage. Now, collagen, I'm going to talk a little bit about, and we're not going to go, you know, deep into a um, skin lecture here because that will take hours, Um, but I'm going to go through some of the kind of important things to understand, Um, but we'll discuss it. So you can, just from, you know, environmental issues, sun, um, if you, you know, smoked in the past, um, even excess, you know, taking sugar in caffeine, um, these, all these things can increase your risk of having collagen damage and also elastin, which is another cell and elastin actually, um, creates the, just like what it says, the elasticity of the skin. So 
the ability for your skin to kind of snap back um, is really important as well because this gives you the ability, the, your skin, the ability to have that kind of um, tautness that we start to lose over time. And so, so the tone of your skin also is, 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 is important to a lot of patients and pigment. Now pigment means that you can over time develop uneven pigment in your skin. So regardless of what your skin tone is, um, you can have often hyperpigmentation, um, changes in pigments, browns and reds, meaning like you can develop, you know, brown spots, uh, darker, uh, spots where you have hypermelanin, um, regardless of your skin tone, um, you can develop extra melanin in, you know, specific areas. And so it creates an unevenness in your skin. And th this of course is, is going to create, uh, you know, something that is not, what you know not what patients want and so there are ways to improve this as well as well as you know broken blood vessels <clears throat> which you can see as reds or um you know sun damage is another um another problem that happens over time so these these issues are all are all kind of the major kind of five problems that i'm going to target when we talk about skin care for men. Um, and of course, they transcend to women as well, but we're going to focus on guys because this is the Modern Man podcast. So, um, And a lot of times, guys are going to be less diligent about what they do with their skin. Um, you know, I've had, ta have had discussions with some of my patients and um, they've, they've told me that, uh, ivory soap does really well for them. And so, um, so we'll discuss, we'll discuss, we'll, we'll go through it. We'll get, we'll get you where you need to be. So, so why are the things that you see on late night TV or at the pharmacy, not the best things or not are wasteful, um, as far as, like I, I saw this on TV. I saw this advertising. They said it's great. It's going to get rid of all my lines, and it's not. And so, why does that happen? Mm. <clears throat> so, we didn't go through kind of like some of the basics of skin, and it's important to kind of understand because if you understand it, then you'll understand why a lot of the things that you might do might not actually work. So skin has, you know, three kind of important layers um, that we're going to kind of discuss. Um, the first is the outer layer, and it's called the epidermis. It's the outermost layer. Um, so the epidermis sheds usually um, um, every 28 days. Now, the fact is, actually, as we get older, it can take longer for it to shed. Now, as we're much younger, it actually sheds sooner. It could shed up to 14 days. But um, for some patients over 50, it could take up to 80 days for the epidermis to shed. So that's why when we talk about things called peels, they are, they are useful because of the fact to get rid of that um, outer layer of skin, some of that, some of that, um, dead skin and, you know, that outer layer was, is useful. But the reason is, is that the epidermis, like when you use a lot of the lotions and potions that you see on TV or at the pharmacy, those, those, um, materials that you're putting on your skin are being placed on the epidermis and they're being sloughed off you know, over that period of time, <clears throat> meaning that they're not making permanent change on your skin because whatever you're putting on the surface of your skin at some point eventually is going to be, um, 
is go, is going to eventually be um, sloughed off. Now, if you're doing it every day, then you can develop change. You know, you're going to see changes um, because there is melanin in your um, epidermis. So things like retin A and uh, tretinoin, which we'll discuss, we'll discuss a little bit here. I mean, a lot of what we're going to talk about today is kind of a, more of a general idea of skin. I'm going to go, you know, over the length of these podcasts into specific issues, and we're going to kind of focus in on, you know, more kind of uh, specific ways that you can fix problems because I realized that like you can I could sit here for three, four hours and I don't know if anybody's gonna want to listen to me for that long. So instead we're gonna break it up into more kind of a general uh more general kind of approach to um just looking at skin today. So so the epidermis the size of the epidermis is 1.5 to 2 millimeters. Now, why is that important? And the reason why that's important is that when you when you have you could buy things online that say that they um, pierce the skin that are less than two millimeters, and that is. You know that is kind of the kind of FDA approved, um, um, you know, purchasing. Then anything below that is only going to be in the epidermis. So that means that you're not going to get into the second layer of the skin, which is what we call the dermis. Now the dermis is a more permanent um, part of the tissue. Now, so the reason why, like, we have tattoos that never go away because the fact is that when they put the ink into the skin, they're putting it into the deeper layer, the dermis. So every time that the, you know, the, the epidermis is left off, it doesn't affect the, the ink that's already in the dermis or scarring that's in the dermis. So the scars stay there, you know, because of the fact that it's in the deeper layer. And so this is really important. So if you want to affect change, you have to get into the dermal layer of the skin. And so this is the reason this is the whole kind this is the whole idea behind medical skin care and skin skin treatments. And I explain this to my patients all the time that most of the treatments that we do have the same philosophy, and I'll explain it to you that you have to get into the deep layer of the skin to be able to actually affect permanent change. If you don't, you're not going to be able to affect this type of change. And the third layer of the skin is is deeper, and that's the subcutaneous tissue, and that's deeper than the dermis, and this has the connective tissue and the fat layer, and this is the is this layer is deeper than the dermis, um, and so you know a lot of times when people are, um, you know, gaining weight, you know, then they'll see the in their skin there's more sag, and that's because you know in that that area they create what's called fat pads, and they'll see that they're creating these. Um, they're creating this the skin to become um more um enlarged because of the because of the subcutaneous tissue bef- behind it so so that is that is the you know first kind of understanding that you know using many of the surface materials that we have don't really do much permanently unless you do it every single day and you're kind of focused on what you're trying to achieve, um, the epidermis is going to eventually going to be sloughed off. So to create permanent change, you need to actually get to the point where the the epidermis, the epidermis is sloughed off, but the dermis is affected. So you need to get into the dermis, which is at least we we say at least three millimeters into the skin is where the dermis lies. And that's 
and that's where we have to pierce the skin to be able to get to. So the next idea is collagen. So what is collagen? So collagen, elastin, these are the cells that are created, and collagen is kind of the, the structure, creates the structure of the skin. It's kind of the scaffold of the skin. And so as we get older, the amount of collagen that we produce decreases. Now, elastin is also cells that are produced, and this creates the elasticity of this, the skin. Remember, like the snapback, like the rubber band um, cells of our skin. And so as these cells decrease, the skin becomes drier, less elastic, thinner. And so these create the lines, the, the wrinkles, the, um, you know, the fine lines and, and just the, the less, um, you know, attractive, you know, areas of the skin that we, that we want to improve. What, why does collagen decrease? You know, there's, there's different reasons why collagen can decrease at a more rapid rate. And obviously environmental factors, smoking, UV light, um, lack of sleep, um, excessive sugar, all these things can increase the, 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 um, rapid decline of collagen production. And so any of these things that you do are going to, um, cause less collagen to be produced. And so, that's the first idea. So we'll, I'll talk about a couple of natural things you could do to, to, um, to improve this for sure. Um, and so, so college, so when we, so when we want to increase our collagen, why do we want to increase our collagen? Because if we're increase our collagen, then we're able to increase the ability for our skin to be more, um, elastic you you're able to see you know the lines improved the scarring improve you know so you're able to see repair of the skin and so this is why we want to try to improve and increase the production of collagen so how do we do that so the best way that we found in medical terms to actually increase the production of collagen is to cause a wound within the deep layer of the skin or the dermis. And so what does this mean? So when you cut your skin, for instance, um, let's say that you um, damage the skin by, um, you know, you, you cut on a piece of glass, all of a sudden you'll see um, a, a, day, a, a day goes by and you'll start seeing all this kind of scarring occur. And so these cells... Um, are collagen cells, elastin cells. These are the wound healing cells. These are the cells actually we want. The problem is, is that these cells are on, are uh, being affected on a, you know, single area of the skin that is often irregular. And so it doesn't look attractive. So you would think like, why would I want to, you know, wound my skin cause a wound response on my skin. Well, the point is, is that you want a deep wound, first of all, and you want a uniform wound, second of all. So both of these things are going to create a wound response that doesn't look abnormal, does, does not look um, jagged or, you know, or, or cause um, an abnormal response, but instead you're going to be producing these collagen, elastin, these cells that we want to produce. And so um, that's where we want to, that's where we want to approach. So everything that we do in the medical field when it comes to skin is the idea of producing more collagen, producing more elastin, and producing it in a way that's going to create more permanent change. And so the idea really is create a wound that's uniform that's going to be in the permanent layer of the skin and so if we can do that 
then we can create more collagen. And there's so many different ways that we can do this. And I'm going to go over some of them. Now, there's lots of different ways that we do this, actually. Um, I'm not going to go through every one of them. I'm going to go over cer certain things that I, I'm going to go over certain things that kind of lay out um, from the original outline of the things that we focused on, the five problems that we looked at. Um, so, first of all, if you want to do some natural things to, to get started, um, to make sure that you can increase your collagen, you can certainly um, increase your sleep. Um, vitamin C is very helpful because vitamin C does help the production of collagen decrease your sun exposure and that could be by simply you know putting sunblock on because you you don't want to damage your collagen you know any of the collagen that's that's present as, as it is obviously smoking and you can do things like increase your protein intake um you know there are you know collagen supplements bone broth these things are helpful they're going to give you know, some improvement, again, there's only going to be so much improvement that you're going to get. I mean, I have a lot of patients who come to me and, and tell me that they have taken um, these collagen drinks and they take it every day and they don't, not sure that they're getting much results. And look, there's going, to, you're going, to, you you on some cellular level there probably is some benefit to it um but i mean the reality is is that you're going to have you know just so much change because of the fact that your ultimate goal is to create the collagen in specific areas that you're trying to improve and so we're talking about you know in the face specifically and since we're since we're working well, since we're talking about the face, I mean there are the areas we could talk about too, but that's that's why you want the wound response to occur there. So, so the first medical treatment that I'm going to discuss is something called microneedling. So microneedling is something that we use um, very often. It's very small needles that usually you could use it. We use it on a pen. Some some places um, you could use on a roller. Um, they used to actually do these tiny little needles. Either way, what the microneedling does is that that creates an organized injury to the dermal layer. You know the the microneedling needles will go deep enough into the skin to cause this organized injury into the dermis. So that's causing the wound response. Now, what you're putting on the on the microneedling uh, on the skin does help because of the fact that often we'll put something like hyaluronic acid. You could put vitamin C. Um, we're going to talk about platelet-rich plasma, or PRP, in another podcast because I I was originally going to um, add that to this podcast, but I think it's such a, a interesting and important topic. I'm going to leave it for its own podcast. So, but platelet platelet-rich plasma, which is um, you know spinning down your platelets to the to their um, to their own platelets, and as growth factors, and even you know evidence of s stem cells that are are present in those um, those platelet those those platelets that are added to the skin, which creates amazing res results. Um, and the reason is is that when you're adding these these um, products to the collagen, it's not only causing the collagen response, but it's also helping to repair any of the collagen damage that occurred. So, 
platelet-rich plasma has the added benefit with microneedling to actually not only increase the wound response to produce new collagen, produce new elastin, but it also helps to repair old collagen cells that were damaged. And so when the body starts to re, you know regenerate it creates you know these new new cells that are you know are incredible so um so that's one so that's one uh, pro, uh that's one technique that we use um which is really helpful you know for the skin so microneedling in general now microneedling another procedure that we use, um, which helps is microneedling with radio frequency. It's a newer technique. It's has been around for oh five six years or so. But I mean, the nice thing about this technique is actually the the combination um, of radio frequency, which is radio frequency is basically increasing the heat of the tissue and so what that does is that will affect the subcutaneous tissue and when that happens that create that helps the heats up that subcutaneous tissue and that will decrease the skin laxity in that area and so what what that does is that not only not only helps the texture and texture of the skin but also that's going to create an improvement in the tone of the skin right away because it's actually lifting because you're you're helping the sagginess of the skin because of the fact that you are getting into the even deeper layer of the skin which is the sub subcutaneous tissue so microneedling with radio frequency gives the benefit of having patients receive the wound response of microneedling on top of the subcutaneous tissue um, being affected by the radio frequency by being heated up and actually decreasing the skin laxity and actually tightening, tightening the skin at the same time, which is an incredible thing. Now, different type of lasers. The two types of lasers that, you know, are often talked about are ablative and non-ablative lasers. So ablative means that ablate any type of ablative laser technology. So this is heating the skin, also creating a wound response. So this is creating with lasers intense heat creating this wound response where microneedling is creating the wound response by you know the small needles that actually cause the damage to the dermis the lasers create the damage with heat and so the ablative technology actually literally will um, remove the entire layer of the um, the epidermis essentially <coughs> excuse me um so you're getting rid of the entire layer of the the skin and that's essentially causing the wound response into the dermal layer and so you're getting so you're getting rid of a lot of the imperfections in the epidermis you know which you do get you know it does give you a nice response in that in that vein plus you're getting the permanent change by causing the um, wound response in the dermal layer. Non-ablative lasers also create a wound response by creating large amounts of heat, but they don't completely remove the um, epidermal layer of the skin at that at the time of the treatment. I mean, the major difference as far as benefits, you know, for this treatment is that ablative type of lasers you definitely have a downtime meaning like you're going to have to 
um, not be able to leave your house for a few days to maybe a week, depending upon how significant the the laser is. Where non-ablative lasers, you probably still will have downtime, but it will be less. And so we talk a lot about, you know, with treatments, like what downtime is. With microneedling, the downtime is usually 24 hours, maybe 48, depending upon the sensitivity of your skin. Um, and so, you know, that is one of the things that, you know, people don't have the time for time for downtime. And so we kind of, we feel that, that gearing your treatments to the, the, your ability to downtime is, is really important. Now, another technique is, um, what we call interdermal infusion. So interdermal infusion is we, we use very small needles, very similar to microneedling, but, um, these needles have, are hollow, and so you're able to infuse different products in. <clears throat> so things like um, neurotoxin, things like vitamin C can all be placed into the um, the bottles that go that that are attached to these um, interdermal um, infusion um, uh, mechanisms. And so what what is nice about these are that they do create a wound response. Interdermal infusion, if you heard of ever heard of something called Aqua Gold, this is this is kind of the kind of brand name of it. You know, I try not to kind of pr- promote the, you know, Q tip of the of the um you know, the uh the procedures because that's what they are, but I mean meaning like Botox is you know, Botox is like the Q-tip of of uh, neurotoxin because of the fact that it is just the brand name of a company of their brand because there's all different types of neurotoxins. But so Aqua Gold is kind of the commonly known interdermal infusion technique. And so what what it does is that you can place because the the needles are hollow, you could put vitamin C, you could put neurotoxin into these areas and so the great thing about this is that it actually creates for pore size it's it's very effective to improve as well as you can get deep enough into the skin that it, it will create a wound response affect the texture tone the fine lines wrinkles um, so interdermal infusion is another excellent technique that is going to improve um, the skin, but also the the nice thing about it is that it it does give you the benefit of improving pore size. And so that's another thing that we look at. Now as far as pigment, one of the one of the things that we uh, go to um, is something called IPL. Um, so IPL is not a laser. It's in, it's what we call intense pulse light. Intense pulse light essentially creates wavelengths. It's a high out. It's basically a high output flashlight, uh, flash lamp, I should say. Um, and so what happens is, is that it creates these high heat energies that's created at certain wavelengths. And so at certain wavelengths depending upon the pigment, those pigments will be picked up by these uh, wavelengths. And so those wavelengths, so those pigments will be damaged by those, that heat wavelength where the, the non-pigmented cells won't be affected at all. So it's, it's a pretty, it's a pretty effective tool because of the fact that you want to, you want to, help improve things like brown spots for instance if you had like a sunspot if you had a red spot you know from you know um you know some um you know damage to a blood vessel or um any type of other condition where you're developing excessive hyperpigmentation in 
you know, specific reds and browns. And I'm not going to go through all the different conditions because there are a lot of them. Um, but what you're kind of looking at is they effectively change the, um, they effectively work on these cells and get into the deep layer of the skin. And so that creates the damage to those pigmented cells and those pigmented cells, once they're damaged, then they eventually will be sloughed off. And so the IPL is excellent for hyperpigmentation. And depending upon, and there's some, there's another device called BBL, which has also different types of wavelengths. So your, um, your pigment, depending upon what the problem is and what the pigment is, your your the device is going to you know best kind of suit what you know you're trying to achieve. So so intense pulse light is is really the best kind of procedure for that. Um, also peels peels are different depth um, peels. What they do are usually chemical um, in nature. And again, what you're doing is you're getting into kind of the, the, you know, a, the most um, superficial layer of the skin and you're creating the change. And it also affects, you know, in the superficial layer, it also is going to affect the melanin and some of the pigmentation as well. So, Peels, depending upon the depth of the peel, there's there could be downtime. Um, all peels are a little bit different. There are superficial peels. There are, there are deeper peels. I think I'll go a little bit deeper into you know peels because there, it's a little bit um, of a broad topic at a, at, a, at a, another podcast. Um, but um, they're another way to help hyperpigmentation and kind of clarity of skin. And, um, and that's another kind of approach to it. And another thing I'm going to just briefly discuss is, uh, IV hydration when it comes to, when it comes to skin as well. Um, vitamin C is really important for the clarity of your skin. It's an antioxidant. It also helps produce collagen. And so the best way to always get nutrients into your body is through IV hydration because it's going directly, it's surpassing your gut. So a lot of our patients will do IV hydration for the skin. <clears throat> the other procedure, the other, um, the other amino acid that we use is glutathione. The glutathione is the strongest antioxidant in the entire body. You cannot get it orally. You, anything that you take that says glutathione orally will be um, destroyed in your GI tract. So don't waste your money. You can only take really glutathione. The studies only really show that glutathione is effective either IV or nebulized, meaning like inhaled. You, there's no studies that even show that it, you can take it intramuscular, that it's effective. So glutathione does two things besides for the fact that it is the strongest antioxidant there is. It also suppresses melanin. And so for patients that have hyperpigmentation issues, the glutathione actually is going to help suppress melanin in general. And so those areas that are most hyperpigmented are going to be affected the most because of the fact that that's where the most melanin is, is um, you know, affected. And so that being said, that, you know, taking IV glutathione actually does help um, suppress, you know, the hyperpigmentation. So that's another approach um, that some of our patients have, have gone to as well. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to skin a cat. No pun intended, talking about skin. Um, but in reality is is that um, 
you know, this is a very long topic and I really kind of, uh, you know, pared it down to kind of the basics. Um, you know, things like I said, I, I'm going to kind of just break down just the, the, um, bullet points and, um, I'm going to go kind of in depth into a lot of these issues into future podcasts so we can kind of discuss further. Um, so acne scarring, um, you, you want to think about, um, things like peels is an excellent choice for acne scarring <coughs> and microneedling, uh, pore size, um, dermal infusion is an excellent excellent choice and either ablative or uh, non-ablative lasers um, for texture tone um, microneedling microneedling with PRP um, interdermal effusion um, these are really kind of the the top you know as far as as far as I'm concerned you know getting these these areas improved um, and then pigment for sure IPL um, and then like we talked about um, we, you can go to things like IV therapy you can go to um, peels as well tone tone goes into a lot of different things <clears throat> I didn't talk about you know even um, you can you can do, like I said, uh, microneedling with radio frequency is an excellent choice. Um, there's ultrasound technology. There's other things out there. Um, tone also, we'll talk a lot about tone when we get to the ideas of fillers. And you can you can do tone with um, with skin care but you can also use dermal fillers as your as your uh, go-to to improve tone because sometimes that's the best way to improve tone um, and with dermal fillers which we're going to talk a lot about in the, in the next um, coming podcast I'm going to discuss how we do that um, so we will get into all of that, but I think this was a pretty productive um, podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it was a lot of information, um, and um, I'm going to, like I said, try to kind of break down some of the other topics. And if you have, you know, questions, and um, if you have other things that you want to have discussed, just leave a comment below. Um, I will discuss them um, and we'll get deeper into it because I, I plan on discussing the ideas a little bit deeper. So, um, so this was great and uh, I appreciate the time and um, we will see you the next time on the Modern Man Podcast. Thank you again. This is Dr. Robert Frankel. Yeah.